nice. Okay, so this is the intro reel for PC gaming. For the next today. two hours? Oh my god. Gameplay footage for Vampire the Masquerade. Bloodlines 2. Borderlands 3. We're right on time. The reveal of Evil Genius 2. Yeah. Starmancer. Last Oasis. Evil Genius is so cool. Two new games from Coffee Stain Studios. Griftlands. Planet Zoo. What's next for Terraria? Remnant from the ashes. Ah, oh, that looks so Mosaic. good. <laughs> I'm keen for Remnant. That's by uh, Gate three. uh, what's the face? Gunfire Games. The reveal of Unexplored Two. Alijo. Age of Wonders. Can I turn off the Planet subtitles? Good, good question. And more. But and now your oh. PC gaming. Do you guys think hosts. I should keep the subtitles on? Nine and Frankie Ward. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the PC Gaming Show! Yeah, yes, we're so happy you're here today. We have a great show for you lined up. We got 30 games that we're going to be showing off, 30, some of them will be updates to existing franchises and titles, others will be exclusive world first looks. Y'all ready? Well, I first want to They've thank been our sponsors at this for helping make this event year. possible. Without their support, this event would not happen each year. So thank you so much. Thanks to you for coming out. It's 10 a.m. in Los Angeles. Happy Monday, everyone. Best day of the week. Hello to all of you up in the balcony. And of course, thanks to you tuning in live from all over the internet, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're tuning in from, welcome. We're happy to have you. My name is Day9. I'm one of your hosts for this event. Joining me is the fantastic Frankie Ward. Hello. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. Hello, everyone. Now, for you guys at home, yeah, the first year of the PC gaming show was really on, rough. I remember we that. We are going to be pulling your clever comments. I remember dying live just, watching just it. Remember, that I said clever comments from Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook throughout the show, making you famous on the internet, on the screen. We're going to be sharing them live. And one of the things we're especially looking for are your questions for the Borderland 3 team, because Sean, you've got a mission to put their questions to the developers later. That's right, midway through this show, I'm gonna be asking those questions to the creative director of Borderlands 3, use hashtag PC Gaming Show, and we'll read them live. Do Until it, then, we'll tweet clever let's things. Let's start the PC Gaming Show with our very first title from UK developer Rebellion. Several years ago, they announced that they were working on the follow-up to Evil Genius. So I kind of wish at the beginning they didn't have that sizzle and reel now, of here's what's coming. Because now we know like vision for the project. So, PC 10 of the games. Show. Who's ready to stroke a cat menacingly? Here is the world is blue to reveal for Evil Genius 2. World. I know they said they're going to have 30 games and they definitely didn't show anywhere close to 30 in that reel, but like, or at least what we caught of it, but like, still. Yeah, the first Evil Genius was so good. I only got to play it a little bit, but I thought it was really cool. It's exactly what it sounds like. You make a lair, and then the, the spies try to come through the lair. It's dope. Yeah, these are your, like, grunts. They're so good. I love how lame some of them look. Yeah, it's true, it is a very much like Dungeon Keeper, you're right. That's a great analog. Very nice CG trailer. Vampire, the uh, I, I'm like, the I'm a bad boy. I'm already like very sold on that game. And even though there was no gameplay, <laughs> very sold. Now, Brian, 
you were a writer on the very first game. So what does it mean for you to finally get to work on the sequel? Um, it means that uh, a lot of people have uh, very high expectations and we have to meet those. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's take a look at whether you are going to meet them because we are going to take a look at the world's first gameplay footage. Yeah, those gloves tell me you're the right guy to work on Vampire. <sighs> I guess I have to be the one to tell you. This looks real good though, based on what we've seen. You're dead. Yeah, I should really play Vampire. Couple of the Masquerade Bloodlines. You're obviously to new say. to this whole existence. I don't want to put tip. But truth in. is, most of you types won't even make it a whole year. We have one rule: you don't break the Masquerade. It is an immersive sim, right? Because I like those types of games. Kind of, yeah. Okay, cool. The city. We're all fighting over scraps here. Welcome to the first day of the rest of your death. Having fun yet? Gotta say, I'm really impressed with the visuals in this game. Like, I know video games look good these days, so but when I think of Vampire, I think, like, very world. janky. Uh, so in, uh, Empire, and this uh, definitely what, surpasses what that. Like, holy kind of shit. Version of our world, and the vampires kind of, uh, Yo, 2020 is going to be stacked, by the way. From humanity. So the vampires are kind right, of get that ticker in uh, there. staying hidden in the shadows while also needing to feed on human beings and kind of manipulating us uh, in order to get blood. We're talking about feeding on human beings. I'm getting flashbacks to last year's show. Kara, it's not just a case, though, of, of sucking blood and filling up your health meter, is it? Actually, different types of blood do different things. That's right. So we have the uh, resonance system, which means that essentially vampires uh, can kind of, like, like, uh, see the emotional resonance of human Oh my god, this poll is so uh, like distracting. Fear or a desire, and then they can, uh, they can feed on those people to like feel the same things as human beings do to feel more kind of alive, um, and that can give you like extra boost in the game. And there were some really interesting characters in that trailer as well. What kind of relationships are we going to be forming with them as the player? Well, very uh, fragile very volatile relationships, very mature relationships, so it's going to be a fun time. <laughs> and one thing that was really intriguing to me when I was learning about this game is you don't just get bitten and turn into Nosferatu, Dracula, or Brad Pitt. And to be honest, I think you should maybe put Brad Pitt into the game, because then I'm definitely playing it. Put You're Keanu Reeves! To your environment you to can get him, he'll do games now! That's right, so essentially... <laughs> In the game, uh, when you were made as a vampire, uh, sort, of, uh, sort of very He's young, breathtaking. Vampire, a lot of other vampires are made at the same time, um, in this thing called the Mass Embrace. And that means that um, essentially uh, they're having a less. Do you Lucky think he's gonna be in Smash? In do you think, do you think he's like the, the last four DLC them. characters? They what they're doing. They're going through vampire puberty uh, on their own. It's, and, it's, you know, it's Neo, family, John Wick, Johnny say, Mnemonic, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, the guy from Speed. to drinking blood uh, to survive. And so you might have a less good time, let's say, than the player is having. So you can find them throughout the world as well. And Brian, the first game came out in 2004. You've mm -hmm. been waiting 15 years for this. Any pressure? Uh, yeah, tons of pressure. <laughs> but uh, Oh, yeah, I yeah, mean, he could be Bill as well. You're right. Well, you know what? I think there are people around the world. I've actually never and, seen course, Bill and Ted. I really ought to. I can't wait to play this game. Can you wait, guys? <laughs> so I think you've convinced everyone. Bailey Gaming out points out correctly, Keanu game. can't talk about uh, vampires. That would break the masquerade. <laughs> Uh, next year. <laughs> Fantastic. When oh, you you're learn, too right. Bloodlines2.com. Thank you so much, Brian and Cara. Good luck. Give it up, guys. Thank you so much. Now, have you ever wanted to play Dwarf Fortress in space? Starmancer no. is a space station sim from Omenux Games and Chucklefish. After a catastrophe on Earth, humanity has launched a desperate attempt to find refuge among the stars. Your task is to manage a colony capable of sustaining life, crafting components, controlling colonists, and sending out crews to mine asteroids. But when you're living in space, there can be big consequences for even the smallest mistakes. Let's take a look at the brand new gameplay for Starmancer.
The art's really nice. I like this uh, this 3D art. It looks great. That's like a really strong aesthetic, actually. I'm not too into this game, so I just want to tell you, um, yesterday my water was like lukewarm the whole time. So last night I decided to just freeze water in my mug, and like it's just been melting. And I've got this gigantic ice cube now. It's really cool, actually. I can't quite get it out because it's still huge, but you'll have to trust me, this is a really big ice cube, it's nice. The water's really cold and I'm staying refreshed, uh, so... It was worth it. <laughs> oh, this trailer's still going, isn't it? I want to show you guys big ice, but... <laughs> big ice won't come out. Yeah, my, my chunky fingers can't fit around the ice yet. And I can't pour it out because there's... Oh, if I drink all the water, I can take big ice out. <laughs> no, I'll just, I'll just pour it into the other glass. I have two glasses in case Our I run out. Guests both started as modders. Look, I've got and big now, ice now. Look, it's huge. It's massive. I love it. <laughs> Let's welcome to the stage from Tripwire, John Gibson, and from Torn Banner, Steve Piggott. Hey, Sean. Well, we'll check in on Big Ice throughout the day. So if you start as modern, <laughs> working goes. independently, and run your own studio, what, talk me about the collaboration that you started together. Yeah, Steve, so... Uh, <laughs> eat the ice, the what, eat the ice now? Time, uh, it's too even, big ice. Giving them some advice when they were modders going commercial, helping them not... Oh, uh, at some point we may attempt to eat and, big ice. Uh, we've been friends and we've always wanted to work together. <laughs> and now we've sort of formed this independent, <laughs> former mod team, professional super group to get an awesome game out to fans. Yeah, and for us, this is a dream partnership as well. Um, we've always been really close with Tripwire. And <laughs> Get a we really camera shot on Big games. Ice. Uh, no, I don't have another webcam. <laughs> true innovation to the FPS genre, and that's what we're. It'll, it'll keep popping on screen. Well, let's take a look. We'll be back. This upcoming collaboration between Torn Banner and Tripwire. I really wish this was like a Lego expansion, like Forza got. Really, you can do that with every game, and I'd just be down. This stream is sponsored by Big Ice. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> like I've been bought out by Big Ice. <laughs> I'll sell out to Big Ice, but never to Big Ramen. Wow, we got some fucking graphics here. The initial shot I, I assumed to be pre-rendered, but... Kami dude says, uh, apparently Devolver confirmed that they'll announce the release date and other details about Metal Wolf after E3. Cool. Oh, Looking talk forward to, to it. me about Chivalry 2, <laughs> I never really well, played Chivalry, Chivalry but I know a lot of people really loved it. So. Players into their favorite medieval movie That's cool, it's scenes. finally like a proper our, sequel. Our flagship game mode, Team Objective. Because there's been lots of spin-offs and stuff, right? By complete medieval objectives like sieging castles, raiding villages, and, uh, and... Yeah, you're really, you're not just going and standing in an area and then a bar fills up. You're, like you said, burning houses, <laughs> killing peasants. Wife who destroyed asks, yeah. how much cheese should I put on my scrambled eggs? Playing as peasants, getting Probably killed. Probably really all the cheese the you have left is about the right amount. Of the era. Unless and that goes over that, how many we, calories this you have around, for the day. We've increased the player count scale to about two and a half times what the previous game But was. pretty much as much cheese. Players. And, and on <clears> that increased scale, we've added forces, which really allows us to add a lot of It's a shame the Mirage game didn't really go well for them because like Mirage was really Battle cool. I like the aesthetic a lot. From game but... <laughs> Don't worry, we'll ignore the last season. Just Battle of the Bastards is going to be in the game. Yes. All right, so <laughs> I want to ask about the sword play element to Chivalry 2. I mean, I know it's a really critical element. Yeah, and this time around, we've completely revamped. I mean, we really view our, what we're doing here as bringing a true sequel in every sense. Yeah. We've attempted to completely revamp the combat, movement, and animation systems. Mm -hmm. So that every swing, every every action of the combat feels readable and fair, and also has the satisfaction 
of the, and the weight that you would expect when two medieval knights in full armor are clashing. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's very, very fluid and much more accessible than the previous game. And it's, you know, the, the, the pace is so much quicker. It was what I really enjoy when, when I'm playing it. Yeah, and I wanted to ask about the fluidity because in a lot of melee combat games, you hit a button and there's like a full animation swing and then you sort of reset. So it's kind of these discrete, chunky times. I understand that in Chivalry 2, the sword play operates differently than that. Yeah, we kind of think of it like when you're swimming, where you're kind of constantly using both arms at the same time. And yeah. a, a core part of our focus this time around has been making it so that players can fight multiple opponents at the same time. Like one on three, one on four situation? Exactly, because that's fundamentally part of the, the Jesus, becoming that seems the difficult. warrior fantasy right. and uh, achieving glory on the battlefield. Well, I mean, I do have to ask, we've been talking about sword play and mastery, but the original chivalry is, I mean, it's kind of like silly fun. Like, how do you balance the mastery with the fun element? Yeah, our goal has always been to make it so that players can take the game as seriously as they want to and also as silly as they want to. Um, we know that probably about half our audience plays the game drunk, uh, and we love that. Um, <laughs> those, those are our metrics. <laughs> That's an important metric to track. And the game has a huge influence from Monty Python as well. I mean, in the over-the-top voiceovers and the role-playing opportunities, I mean, the game is genuinely hilarious. As an example, you can beat a man with a chicken while quoting Shakespeare. Like, so like picking up a chicken is a yeah, weapon. Yeah, physically that's a mechanic. clubbing him to death. With well, that's yeah. excellent. Well, I mean, I have to ask, when can people get their hands on Chivalry 2? So Chivalry 2 is coming out uh, early 2020, and it's coming uh, first to the Epic Games Store. Well, we'll look forward to checking it out in early 2020. Gentlemen, John Gibson and Steve Piggott, with Chivalry 2. Thank you so much. We are just getting started here at the PC Game financial Show. Security. Let's take a look at what's coming up next. You're watching the PC Gaming Show. Coming up. Build a world for wild. Yeah, they did this last year too, where they have these coming up sections, and it's like, don't. Remnant from the you don't. You don't have to. I'm watching. Baldur's Gate 3. Like, and more trailers, interviews, and I guess you're worried footage. we're going to stop watching, but like, it just continues. They did this last year, too. So is this actually a sponsored spot? I guess so. Why Epic Game Store? Well, because Epic probably paid them a lot, and I think they chose that financial security rather than the risk of, of not, you know, being financially secure. Ultimately, like, you know, if you're running a company and you have the responsibility of keeping people paid, and you get an offer for like, hey, you know, we'll make sure everyone's paid for, that was a brand new trailer for Mosaic, a dark and atmospheric adventure game coming later this year from and the developer Killbite and that app Killbyte also seems to be out. Fury. So how are you guys enjoying it so far? So that was just a trailer, like that wasn't a sponsored spot? So then why did we need the coming up next thing? Like... But Blip Blop looked really fun. Our next game is a ghost themed multiplayer hide and seek game inspired by a popular mod. Charge up your proton packs and get ready for Midnight Ghost Hunt. When the night falls, there's only you. So this is like that prop hunt game mode that people like, right? That seems so to be. Tell me where are you? I got a big surprise for you.
but like a more feature complete prop hunt. God, I need to play Typhon Hunter and pray. Got a big surprise the art looks nice too. Like it's a, it's such a simple aesthetic, right? Just the haunted mansion look with your 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 not Ghostbuster Ghostbusters, but it looks like they really landed it. Yeah, that's rad, that game. Joining me on the stage. I don't even play multiplayer Midnight stuff, and that's Ghost bad. Hunt is the dynamic one-man team. Creative oh. director. How do you test this game? How do you test this game? How do you Sam, implement a feature and test please it? Please tell us what is going on in that. How do you what do that? Midnight Ghost Hunt all about. <laughs> so Midnight Ghost Hunt is a multiplayer ghost hunting hide and seek game. Uh, you can play as either as ghosts or ghost hunters, like a 4v4 format. I see. Uh, the ghosts can hide inside average everyday objects around the haunted house. Uh, the goal is to look like harmless furniture, uh, but on the inside, they're not so harmless ghosts as you saw. Yeah, and, and if I'm understanding correctly, it's not about hiding as a lamp to try to assault and take out a hunter. It's actually, you would do that so that way you can keep running away and continue to hide. Exactly, so the main objective of the ghosts is to try to stay hidden as long as they can until the time runs out, until the clock strikes midnight. Midnight being kind of the uh, hour oh, of the yeah. ghosts, basically. Um, they can fight back if they like, but in general, uh, you know, they want to try to hide. But if there's a hunter kind of off by himself, he can quickly just hit him in the back of the head and knock him out real quick, and he has less hunters to deal with at that point. See. Well, what, what's the identity oh, no, of the I'm just the making hunter? a joke because he's one person, the place. What are the and it would be hard to play so test new features kind of alone. Uh, divided into it was two just a joke. Uh, the first part of the game is kind of almost That's like all. a detective game <laughs> because they're sort of trying to figure out where the ghosts are hiding because it's not really... Uh, you know, obvious at first glance. So they've got gadgets like a footprint tracker, they've got like a radar like you saw, to try to narrow down where in the haunted house these ghosts are hiding, basically. Uh, as soon as the first ghost is found yeah. though, it starts getting a bit more chaotic. Uh, people, there's ragdolls flying everywhere and they have that cannon to really try to smash the ghosts into pieces. So those are kind of the two aspects of the ghosts. I see. Well, uh, talk to me a little bit. Yeah, about I really like the look of how he like smashed them up and vacuumed them. I understand it's based on a cool. Gary's mod mod called Pop Hunt. Right. So uh, that's definitely a big inspiration. But the big twist for us is that the props fight back. You saw the furniture, they hurl themselves yeah. at you, they knock you out, they send you flying. So it kind of almost becomes like this action hide and seek sort of mashup. Uh, you have a reason to be a little bit afraid of uh, the, the things that you're hunting. So that changes yeah. up the dynamic a good amount, I think. And I want to ask about when the clock strikes midnight. We saw the very spooky red color pop up. We didn't see what happens then. What's going on there? So midnight, if even uh, one ghost survives four minutes into the match, then uh, you hear this ominous grandfather clock chime across the map. All the lights will actually flicker out. It'll get really dark and scary, and all of the ghosts that were destroyed actually return as vengeful spirits. Uh, they're a lot more powerful than before, and they glow a very brilliant red. So at this point, uh, the tables have turned. The hunters are now the hunted, and they just need to try to work together to uh, stay alive long enough for their evac to come, which is another four minutes or so. Usually wow. the ghosts wow. win. When Double it gets match to time. Are you talking about like 90% like of the time? Like the nine, yeah, like usually because the ghosts are so overpowered at midnight. Right. The hunters are doing whatever they can to try to prevent midnight from even occurring by destroying all right, of the right. ghosts and clearing the house, basically. Well, awesome. When can people get the chance to try out Midnight Ghost Hunt? So we'll be running an alpha event later in the summer. Uh, you can sign up at midnightghosthunt.com. I'd also like to give a shout out to our Discord, uh, discord.gg slash midnightghosthunt. Uh, later in the summer, we'll be giving out keys on our Discord as well as on our main website. Well, wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam Malone from Vaulted Sky Games. That's dope. That's a really cool game. For our next title, we got Frankie Developed up by in the Sam balcony, and alone. if I understand correctly, Frankie, this is a sequel. You do understand correctly, Sean, yes. It's a big sequel to a small indie game. Unexplored 2 is a procedural adventure, a roguelike that challenges you to fight, to be clever, and to solve its mysteries. Explore a beautiful world, engage with its creatures, and befriend its people. Search for magic lakes and ancient statues until you die. And die again. This is Unexplored 2. Big Sugar. Hey, these guys know how to name something.
Yeah, these colors are really wonderful. All these, like, sharp, hard shadows. Oh my god, this is fucking live bullying. This is a sequel to something. I've never heard of the first game. One of the biggest bang for your buck that you can get when building a new rig is investing in a new monitor. And here to talk about a groundbreaking new display is Samsung's Dean Del Cero. Welcome, Dean. What you got for us? Oh, his mic's not on. Samsung C27 RG5 Curve Gaming. Okay, it's good now. Well, let's take a look. Sorry, this is an ad for a gaming monitor, right? Oh, I see the demonstrating how this works. When I was young, we used to play Ocarina of Time at 12 frames per second, and we liked it. It was the best game ever. If you're not playing at 240 hertz, you're playing less video games, basically. And you also don't like video games as much as the people playing at 240 hertz. Dean, we've seen the video. And I gotta start asking, talk to me about some of those juicy features and specs. So it's a 240 hertz curved gaming panel. We believe it's a world's first. So you have lag-free and tear-free performance. Um, I'm and we think that the, the curve, yeah. it's a 1500 R radius, is going to be a very immersive experience you wouldn't get from a traditional flat panel. And I wanted to ask a little bit about some of the color specs. Sure, it's a 3000 to 1 contrast ratio. So you get those deeper blacks, brighter whites, right. and hopefully you'll see your enemies first before they see you in the dark scenes. Yeah, and I, I understand it also has G-Sync. I saw that flash Samsung's up on the screen as well. Samsung's first G-Sync compatible monitor, so we're super excited about that. Well, since this is the well, I didn't know Samsung show, didn't have G-Sync. We're showing off a huge variety of games That's here. cool. G-Sync's great. What are the types of games that you would expect that 240 hertz refresh rate and the G-Sync to work well with? Sure, so we think everybody's going to appreciate the, the speed and the performance, but ultimately, eSports first-person shooters are really going to benefit. Right. Well, of course, I have to ask, not just when is it available, but what, what type of cost are we talking? Sure, so it'll be available in mid-July for under $400 uh, for a 27-inch panel. So it expands okay. our gaming line. I, I don't need a monitor, need a but... Because yeah. yeah, when you said 400, exists. I mean, that's the 27-inch is right. the $400 monitor. Wow. Yeah, so our gaming line will be expanded to eight models, ranging from 24 all the way up to a 49-inch dual QHD. Uh, check out samsung.com slash gaming240 or see us in the back of the room for more info. Yeah, that's right. For any of you in the audience, it's there. You can go there for it. It's it is 4K. not 4K. It's not 4K. Not for that price point. Someone in the audience just asking 4K, not for that well, price well, point. That's a really honest answer. Great presentations <laughs> and games coming up. Let's look at what's coming up in the PC gaming shop. Not for that price point. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Stay tuned for more. Yeah, you got it. Trailers at never before seen footage, including Gearbox answers burning questions about Borderlands 3. The next game from Clay Entertainment. Yeah, they've Get shown that a little. I think last year they announced it here. In Valfaris and more. And now the PC Gaming Show presents What's Next from Funcom. <laughs> Like, I can only assume this is a sponsored Hello, bit everyone. because it has a warm applause. Um, that thing. It's very exciting for that all of us bumper. at Funcom to be here I at the PC know. Gaming Show. For Ice the very is doing first good. Ever. 
Ice is still good. Like I still can't reach it out myself though, so it's still large. So Approximately the same size. Ado, here are some of the games coming. Like I, there's almost no water left in the mug. So I'm gonna need to wait for it to melt if I want to drink again. Something strange is going on all across the zone. I don't fear nothing. I played this a little bit. Well, I played Mutant Year Zero, not Seed of Evil, but I played Mutant Year Zero a little bit on the Xbox One since it was in Game Pass. It's really good. <laughs> it's super well made. I'm very impressed with it. Like insanely difficult a lot's though. Since you've been traveling, Con, we could use your skills. Stalkers got each other's backs, right? What happens to you happens to me. I can't believe, like, Conan is still getting games, and it's still, like, an active video game franchise. Like, it's like if Vampirella still had games coming out. Did I skim through some of what happened in the pre-pre-show? I did not. Did anything interesting get announced or happen in the pre-pre-show? Oh yeah, I saw that there was a Mortal Kombat stage play, actually. I saw that on Twitter. I, I actually really want to watch that bit. Like, there was an original stage play written, right? And they had, like, shitty cosplays? Oh, they showed off Judgment, really. So yeah, at Funcom, cool. we've been doing our own games for over 26 years now. But recently, we had the great pleasure to be working with some other very talented developers and help them publish their games. And on that note, I'd like to introduce Phil Mays. Uh, he is founder of Mighty Kingdom, a studio out of Australia, who has been working with us on something a little different. Thank you, Natasha. So on April 1st this year, we put out a little trailer for something called Conan Chop Chop. And uh, considering the date, it was perhaps no surprise that people decided that that was uh, April Fool's joke. So. Uh, yeah, we have a little surprise for you. Check this out. Like, it's 2019 and we're still talking about Conan. Oh, they played Ape Out with a live drummer. That sounds cool. I should really skim the pre pre show. Seems cute. The art reminds me of uh, X Gen Studios stuff. Too, there. So there you have it, uh, Conan Chop Chop. It's a roguelike action adventure game. Uh, it's very real and it's coming to PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch on September the 3rd this year. It's 2019. We also have a playable version here in at our that demo is, room. Right. So if you want to give Stick Figure Conan a try, then please don't hesitate to drop by. Thank you. Thank you so much. Last Oasis is a nomadic survival game set in a post-apocalyptic -post future where the Earth has stopped rotating. The last humans need to outrun the blazing sun in massive open-world environments. Good times. 
But cheer up, sunshine. This is one of the most original looking multiplayers we've seen, with interesting ideas underneath. A player driven economy and some incredibly incredible death machines. Coming to early access on Steam on July 15th, let's take a trip to the last oasis. My tribe built wooden legs to lift us over the burning sands. We must move forward or die beneath the sun. This fucking scary ass vehicle. There's like way too many legs on this thing for me. This reminds me of, uh, what's that airship one? Where you and a team pilot airships? Like, this reminds me of that a lot. Guns of Icarus, yeah, that's one. Like, this looks pretty neat. I wonder how, like, dynamically destructible these vehicles are, if at all. Oh, a nice logo. Wow, that's a cool logo. Yeah, the last 4X game I played was like Galactic Civilizations. Like, how many years ago? I don't know, 15 years ago or some shit in high school. And I'm not gonna lie, I struggled at it. I wasn't very good, and I can't say I liked it too much. <laughs> and then I went back to playing Warlord Battlecry 3 every day. Uh, Warlord Battlecry 2. Looks nice though. The name of the game is Age of Wonders Planetfall, a 4X strategy game, and joining me on the stage to talk about it is the game director. 4X Leonard is one Sox of those like subgenres that like whenever Tom I hear it, I just guys. glaze over a little. And I'm like, okay, these are awesome, but so I can't. Leonard, just give us the gist of <laughs> I what can't. Age of Wonders Planetfall is. They're really cool, sure. but no, nope, not for me. A strategy game where you play as one of the survivors of a shattered galactic empire. At the start of the game, you choose or, or create your own faction. Yeah. They include uh, the Vanguard Expeditionary Forces, who are in cryo sleep when everything went to hell. Um, there's scavenging cyborgs, or the Amazon bioengineers who ride dinosaurs into battle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to ask, because there's a pretty broad range of 4X strategy games, to give a sense of what the gameplay is, I just want to start from the beginning of a game. What happens when you first land on the planet? Well, um, each race has their own spaceship. The spaceship comes down on the planet. The planet is where the entire game takes place. Mm -hmm. And that spaceship will then transform into your capital colony, where your entire empire begins, your sort of attempt to take over the world. Around you, you've got a number of sectors, and each of these sectors has a little story. Well, not most of them. So I don't know any of these factions. So you'll find a genetic lab, which is still full of horrible mutant creatures, an entertainment complex I only know, like, by horrible Atreides robot and monsters, and a shit. temple with holes in the sky and horrible demons who come and get you. <laughs> <laughs> And I did see in the trailer dinosaurs with lasers, correct? Dinosaurs yeah, yeah. with lasers. Perfect. People love cats dinosaurs. No, sorry. No cats with lasers. Mm. I'm so sorry to disappoint all of you. No <laughs> cats with lasers. You have to settle with dinosaurs. <laughs> you know, I saw the expansive tech tree show up in the game briefly, and I know that growing resources and tech is a huge part of yeah. strategy games. How does that function? Right, so part of these tech trees come from your origin race. They sort of represent the past of where you came from. They include new units, uh, new modules for your units, like jetpacks for your troopers orbital laser cannons you can launch from space, um, social doctrines, it's not all about war. Um, yeah. And then uh, the second part of your tech tree uh, comes from your secret technology, and that's all about the future of your faction. 
Uh, so you can create like a combination between man and machine or man and computers. Yeah. Uh, others include doomsday technologies that allows you to infect the entire population with alien brain-eating parasites or win the game by uh, splitting space-time. I love how many details you're giving me of the horrors that await <laughs> on the planet. Uh, the future is not a pretty place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to ask about some of the combat that we saw. Because in a lot of strategy games, the combat can be very brief. It just you know, shows two armies pinging Man, off. And these guys have no idea what to do with their hands. It's quite rich. Right, so it's a problem when you're on stage like and you're like, what do I do with these like things? Sort of you gotta figure that out ahead of time. When you, you gotta you have, have that on lock. Because it's not gonna get better if you just walk out and try to wing it. I promise you. In turn-based combat, you can move them into cover, use their abilities, shoot laser cannons. Maybe you've chosen the Dvar, so you've got like a bunch of space dwarves and little metal suits that have big holes in the ground, like shoot from the the holes. Maybe you've chosen the Kirko, sort of horrible alien. This guy's wildly into it, though. Like, he really likes what he's making, them, kind of which is I mean, good. How, how long do some of these battles wind up lasting? It depends. A short battle can be maybe uh, two or three minutes, but at the end of the game, you know, you've got a massive siege with like 20 units on your side, 20 units on their side. You've got orbital cannons blasting wow. holes in the world. And that can maybe take 30 minutes. Well, talk to us about when we can play the game. Okay, the game is due uh, this August 6. It's going to be available on PC, multiple platforms, consoles, uh, and it's available for pre-order now. Yeah, I saw that it said Xbox right. One, PS4 What's in the trailer. Uh, it's aow-planethall.com. Well, I'm looking forward Streams, to it. Uh, two months flickering away. Gentlemen, thanks here. So much for I don't know if you guys caught that just there. Right. Bye-bye, guys. Seems like Thank it stopped, but... Thank you for sharing the but... horrors of the future. <laughs> and for our next game, Frankie, I have to ask you, what year is it? Why? The year is 1946, Sean, my dear boy. Europe Conan is still popular. By the satanic Plan Z, a brave band I just of bought big ice Europe for my refrigerator. Little do they know, the nightmare is far from over. Actung, this is the world exclusive reveal of the next shooter from the makers of Sniper Elite 4. Oh. Rated yeah, big mature. ice box. That's what it's called. That's it. So is this uh, uh, that zombie series they do as well? Or is it Sniper Elite? I don't know. Sure looks like that zombie series they do as well. We are approaching the halfway point in this conference, by the way. Man, that text is so good. <laughs> Yeah, all right. It's uh, what is that? Our fifth, fourth zombie game today. Fifth zombie game today, I think. 
Watch the gameplay reveal. Boy, I wonder what that's gonna play like. Boy, I wonder. Later on the PC gaming show. A love letter to classic JRPGs. What's next? Oh, I like that art. Friend? A surreal noir adventure set before, during, and after. This game the I've seen on, on the internet before. Baldur's Gate 3 and more. Come on, For mature Fortnite. Hundred years, the root have ravaged the earth. An unending. Yeah, this I'm looking forward to. Reason. Gunfire is so good. I have like total faith to in them. They're uh, they made understand. Darksiders three. They made Chronos. Um, made a couple this things. Formerly, they were the Darksiders guys before the THQ folded and their studio folded. Unless you so this one's like a four-player co-op fight big monsters game. The hunting game, which is dope. But it plays more like a third-person shooter. You seek the source of death itself. Prepare yourselves. They are here. Oh, I see a couple people saying, like, Evolve. Well, there's no player as the boss, and, like, you don't really hunt them. It's really more of a hunting game, like, Joining me and it's ironic that I say you don't hunt them, it's a hunting game. Trailer, but, you know what I mean? Like, to you don't spend so 20 minutes looking for them. Footage and new environments. Let's welcome the CEO of Gunfire Games, David I like Gunfire Adams. a lot, so... <laughs> Maybe I'm just enamored so with David, it. So, David, I want to ask right away, for those who are unfamiliar with Remnant from the Ashes, what kind of game is it? So Remnant's a co-op action shooter set on an apocalyptic earth and across a bunch of cool fantasy worlds. And I mean, in that trailer, we got the chance to see a huge variety of different environments. Like, what are these different places? Who's the player in this story? So as a player, you're on sort of an Odyssey-like quest to save the world. And uh, we really wanted to have a bunch of different cool locales that you go to just to experience a bunch of different stuff. And you start on Earth, but it, it rapidly changes very quickly as you get into the game. And one thing that we've you know, talked about before is that replayability is a huge focus How do you feel of the about game. Ninja you Theory making it an e game? Still be seeing new bosses, I mean, I'd like to see some gameplay, locations. some real proper gameplay, but I, I think they yeah, I think totally the have the chops the for it. The They're good at melee system. combat. So. so we generate the maps, the enemies, the quests, NPCs, bosses, everything. You, you Don't feel bad about it, hand, that's for right? sure. Yeah, it's all hand scripted, but the system takes all the pieces and stitches it together. So you might play the game and come into work and say, hey, I talked to a giant tree and fought a dragon boss. And I'm that being like, said, we'll see how eSport it is when we see the gameplay, I guess, right? Could just be a cool multiplayer game. And you just have to keep going through and eventually explore or what all the possibilities are. Yeah, you can play the game over and over again to see the stuff. You can jump into your friend's world. To oh, Nibble has some off-screen gameplay on Twitter. Shit, jumping shit in and seeing what you get. Well, I, I want to ask about loot, which is, you know, I understand, a big part of the game. How does it like function that, alongside this ever-shifting gameplay experience? Yeah, the loot in the game is all legendary items, and it's tied into the uh, dynamic generation. So if you fight a boss or meet an NPC or get a cool, unique side quest, it generally coincides with a cool, unique item. It might be a boss weapon oh, or a magical item or armor. So if you play the game and you get all completely different events, you'll have different equipment than I have. And in the trailer, I also saw that there were three people walking through these, and you mentioned the co-op experience. How does co-op function in the world? So the game's full co-op from beginning to end. You can jump in at any point. And the game's definitely slower paced, more difficult. I mean, you will die a lot in this game, so. Awesome. There's a huge advantage to bringing your friends to come in there and help you take down bosses or fight off different events or just generally progress through the world. Yeah, well, I mean, as a big fan of Bloodborne and Dark Souls, I'm really looking forward to Remnant from the Ashes. Like, what that just sounds really cool. Date? Where can people go for more information? So Remnant's coming out uh, August 20th on oh, awesome. PC and Xbox and PS4. And if you pre-order the game now, you can actually get in early and start playing the game August 16th. Well, awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, David Adams from Gunfire Games. Thanks so much for talking to us about So glad these guys are around again after Vigil had to shut down. And as we mentioned earlier, keep those questions coming. I will be asking 
on stage the creative director of Borderlands 3, everything what's, you want what, to know. It's Big Ice. It doesn't matter what platform you're Horizon. on, just use hashtag Big Ice is this. show. It's and Big until Ice. That time, Let's talk it's about huge. Look at it. It's also, was really, uh, update on Big Ice. The PC Real cold. Show here. It's a game from Clay Wasn't quite expecting that. Called Griftlands. It's changed quite a bit in the Still last big. two years. It's now a deck building roguelike where you don't just fight, but you also negotiate it was bigger your ice, way but through a broken down sci-fi world. It's going to be available on the Epic Game Store in one short month on July 11th in Alpha. Let's take a look at some of the footage of what you'll be playing. Ice is nice. <laughs> So Clay's sick. These guys make dope games. I love this uh, main character looking girl. Oh man, it's a card game. Oh man, I didn't even realize. Now I'm super interested. Is this Banner Saga? Uh, no, different developers. Okay, now I'm like way in. Before I wasn't totally sure how this game played, but now I'm totally sure I'm gonna love it. Planet Zoo is the latest game from the makers of the brilliant Planet Coaster. Please welcome Piers Jackson and Lisa Bowens from Frontier Developments. <laughs> now Piers, what kind of zoo are we going to be running here? So Planet Zoo is a new management sim game from us. Um, it involves you building and looking after a modern zoo and you get to look after the most authentic animals we believe you've ever seen in a video game. Each of our animals are unique. They have their own needs, their own desires, and their own behaviors. They interact with each other and react with the world you build around them. And today, for the very first time, we're really excited to be able to show everyone here our gameplay video and to announce our launch date. Well, fantastic. Let's buy the world's largest family pass and take a look inside. <laughs> Yeah, another one of those genres where I just kind of know I'll never ever interact with them. But this is for someone, and that someone is going to play this game for 1600 hours and write a Steam review expressing that the game sucks. That's who this is for. I like the poop vacuum though. I wish more games had that. Can I chuck a kid in the lion's den? <laughs> can you can you build dens for multiple animals and see them fight? By building an arena in between them? If, if you mod that in, I, I'll probably play it. Animal shenanigans here. I mean, hippos pooing. Yeah, adorable baby. Well, that's in the it's Jurassic Park brilliant. one, really. I can't wait to play it. But before that's we awesome. saw the trailer, Piers mentioned this is a modern zoo. But what exactly does that's that mean? That's Jurassic Park so evolution. So nowadays, when you right, go I to think. the zoo, you're not just going to see all the lovely, pretty animals. You go there, you want to be, you know, learning about conservation. Uh, you want to learn about the research that they're doing. You want to be educated. And these are all things that you're going to be able to do in Planet Zoo. And these ideas of the modern zoo is really what we take to heart. And we're going to be promoting, you know, the health 
and the welfare of your animals as the most important thing to do. And Piers, when can we see more gameplay and when are we going to be able to get our hands on it ourselves? So we're um, obviously demoing the game all, um, all this week at E3, but most people aren't going to be able to see that. So you know it's a good PC game? Lisa's done Math Blasters. For it, and they we'll should make another one of those. If we're going to talk educational channel, games, that goes live let's get a new Friday Math Blasters out here. Pacific time. Well, fantastic. I cannot wait to watch. Thank you so much for joining us, yeah. Piers and Lisa. Everyone. Like one that has like, like the platinum. Like if they made a Math Next Blasters up, too. It's probably already guest, too, isn't there? All the way from Japan. Math Blasters Revengeance. Okay. Next up, we have a special guest from Japan. Welcome to the stage, gaming industry legend and Shenmue creator. Oh, of course. Yeah, Shenmue. Okay. Right. That is right. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the stage is a legend of Japanese game development. It's Mr. Yu Suzuki. Hello, everyone. In addition to being the brains behind the following games, Hang On, Space Harrier, Outrun, Afterburner, Virtual Racing, and Virtual Fighter, yu -san also created the Shenmue series. And he's here to talk about Shenmue 3 right now. Take it away, yu -san. Uh... I am so honored to be here standing on the stage today. Yeah, Mike's working. I just want to say thank you to the, all the fans supporting me for the long 20 years. Thank you very much. The wait, the wait is nearly over. That's right, let's take a world exclusive look at Shenmue 3. Man, it really is like finally almost here. I still need to like finish the Honestly, first Honestly, but... I don't think your Kung Fu is strong enough. Uh, Grandmaster, I... A long time ago, Martial arts were bad, but humans are interesting creatures. They practiced in secret, away from prying eyes, and became stronger. One even practiced atop this very boat. Nam Tren survived the ban and was passed on in this way. The voices sound just right. What did you say to me? Stop it. They threaten and extort money from shop owners, get drunk by noon, and cause trouble. Everyone in town is afraid of them. They are heartless. Hey, wait right there! Yes, yeah, save the child! Japanese guy who got in our way. You've got some guts to barge in here on your own. Man, whenever I see people saying this game looks like crap, I'm like, no, it looks perfect. I like, know. so many people have been waiting <laughs> it looks for great. Shenmue 3. I would like to once again thank you so much. Thank you, Yusan, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You, everyone. Thank you. Now our next title is near and dear to my childhood heart. It's based upon a game I grew up playing called Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Let's take a look. Yu Suzuki has been escorted off stage. Coffee Stain Studios and Lava Potion. It's a really nice aesthetic for New Might Magic. Please. 
stun them all So in these final hours We'll raise and rebuild To take back what was ours Songs of Conquest Man, that game looks lovely the name of the game is Songs of Conquest, and here to join me in talking about it is the lead designer from Lava Potion, Carl Toftfeld. Hey, yeah. Carl. Hi, hey, thanks. I mean, let's just start off for anyone who maybe hasn't played the Heroes of Might and Magic series. What is Song of Conquest all about? Um, it's all about, um, well, you kind of start out with in the town that you just saw in the end of right. the trailer, and uh, from there you recruit your wielders, is what we call our commanders, and uh, yeah. you recruit an army, and then you kind of send off your wielders on an adventure. And they go exploring yeah. the world, they pick up resources to flag mines, and with those resources, you upgrade your town so you can get more stuff, and that's kind of what you do. Adventure and strategy combined. Yeah, and, you know, I know that part of the core loop is, obviously, <laughs> getting resources to build up the township, oh, but for one reason, armies, man. Talk to me about those juicy battles. Yeah, so okay, we are officially like halfway through this event. Turn-based. So you go into combat, you bring all your troops in, and you start by deploying them, and then all the troops have different stats, like offense and defense and health sure, and so sure. on. And they go in initiative order, and then you slug it out, and it's a bit like chess, but instead of like pawns and bishops, you have like horned wands and face spirits. Great. And yeah. griffins and so on. Yeah, and all those things. And, well, you know, as, as someone who just loves the Heroes of Might and Magic series, I know that you have translated a lot of the gameplay elements into Songs of Conquest, yeah. but... What are some of the modern elements that you're bringing in? Um, well, there's a lot of it, but I mean, one of them is our magic system. We call it the essence. So basically, uh -huh. in, our, in the Songs of Conquest universe, everything has an essence within them. It's sort of like a soul. So your troops, they have an essence. And to do magic, you need to I bring do think it's nice that they get the developers right out to talk about stuff. Oh, I see. So but at the same to, time, I do feel like the pacing faster, suffers, and this has been a, 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 essence, like a complaint and of mine you for a, question, what a few if years with PC cavalry, Gaming then Show. You can't do the magic. So, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but it's so like on the one hand, I like it. I like hearing the things they have to say. But on the other hand, it's just long. It's a lot. Where can people go to get more information? And as always, When's it coming? It's their format, and, and they're sticking with it. It's 2020. Oh, it's quite a ways off. And the pacing has off, gotten better. You can better go to songsofconquest.com and sign up for anyway, alpha, but... and then oh, love you can play earlier. Well, as you know, I'm really looking forward to playing it, Carl. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Now, our next title is an update to a popular co-op game. Let's see what's in store for Vermin Tide 2. Yeah, Big Ice is still doing well. He's still fine. Quite large. I should really play Vermin Tide. Like, I like Warhammer Fantasy a lot. But there's no Lizard Men in Vermin Tide, are there? Because, like, the Lizard Men wouldn't exactly team up to defeat the Skaven. The Lizard Men kind of do their own thing. They're kind of kind of self-centered in that regard. But I'd love it. I'd love to play as like a temple guard and defend this land. I don't know if I'm ever going to get through that. Yeah, that's cool. I, I really should just fucking play one of these. You just saw the I should just the jump to the second PvP one, right? When I go to play it. Which turns the Warhammer Fantasy Quartz Like, just forget about the first one. Even more brutally competitive. It looks deliciously vile, and surely dismembering Skaven is Yeah, like, so it'd be cool if they did that you know story where the Skaven invented Lustria, because you're right, that did happen, but... Behind their computer screen. I need you it. You can sign up now for the Vermintide yeah, 2 versus beta okay, cool. at vermintide2.com. That's good. Versus. Did we see any Bloodlines 2? Unfortunately, yeah, I'm afraid you did miss the Bloodlines 2 section. It looked great. But yeah, it was the, the I think it was the second starting from game, a single drone in your landing site and so. turning the planet into a flourishing second home for humanity. Courtesy of developer Lawn Industries and publisher Raw Fury, here's a first ever look at Per Aspera. As we yeah. all know, oh, yeah, it is well reaching the Red Wars. Planet was not humanity's greatest oh, achievement. Oh, wait, no, Xbox One. Oh, PS4, bro. Transferring cool. the complexity of the human yeah, mind to machines. Are links allowed? Yeah, post links to whatever, man. So Absolutely. 
long as it doesn't fail. break Twitch rules, it's fine. So they can build us a home on that distant, dusty rock. Today, Amy reaches Mars and begins their mission. Amy, are you with us? Of course, I'm with you, Houston. I kind of like how you're just building on this, like, this map that's portrayed as a map and not as a, like, realistic representation of what a planet should look like. I think that's neat. Otherwise, it doesn't really seem like my type of game, but it's nice. Our next guest sent players back in time to rewrite history. But for his debut project with indie studio Panache Digital Games, oh, yeah, he's Patrice. going to take us back 10 million years to where humanity began. Here to tell us all about ancestors is creative director and co-founder Patrice Desolet. Welcome, Patrice. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. It's I've been waiting 10 years. Yes. To come back on the. I remember stage awkwardly telling this guy in the bathroom well, that I really liked Sands of Time. Back. I just want to ask, what inspired and one time you he offered me a drink. Revolution? I mean, he offered well, everyone in the office Panache, a drink, I but a game, he offered me uh, a drink uh, too. An open world game in which you can do a lot of things. You need a character in a 3D environment at first. Why in the bathroom specifically? Because I didn't have opportunities to talk to him, and I like came out of the stall, and he walked into the bathroom. Oh, let's go back at the And I was like, oh, it'll be easier to do because I won't have to build a city, I won't have to build technology, and I was a bit naive because we built Africa 10 million years ago. That's so it, and that's not easy to build. It doesn't sound easy. I mean, how have you turned those themes into gameplay? Well, you play our last common ancestor, right, of all the big apes, and then you have to explore your, your environment, and eventually you expand your territory, you expand your clan, because you're not playing that one badass character. You play a group of badass character. And eventually you evolve into different species up until Lucy the Australopithecus roughly two million years ago. I imagine our ancestors had uh, a lot more issues to deal with than we do today. There's going to be a lot more dangers in this world, so tell me a bit more about those. Well, it's all about from a prey to a predator. Basically, at the beginning of the game, everybody is there to kill you and devour you. And, and, and basically, at the end, it's pretty much you. We are the predator and everybody's afraid of you. And that's, that's the idea of Ancestors so in nice. kind of Odyssey. So, Patrice, ultimately, what it looks is the so key open to too. Like, it looks like a really big game. Curiosity, you need to explore because, you know, I made game about characters, and you needed to follow the story I wrote for you. This time, you're basically writing the story, right? There's there's no story per se inside. It's not about going and see mission givers. It's not about looking at the mini maps and the little dots. It's about you, hey, Homo sapiens. Can you survive like our ancestors did? And that's the question I'm asking the players. It'll be for you to answer that question August 27th well, I was gonna on PC you, first. I was going to ask you when we can see it, and you answer my question first. Thank you yeah, so much, Patrice. getting good at this. As Patrice says, Ancestors will be released August 27th, and you can learn more at ancestorsgame.com. Thank you. This is how French-Canadian people sound. It's great. Love hearing that. Kind of hoping we get new Shenmue footage there, but whatever, I'll take it. How many epic exclusives? Uh, a fair few. Ah, oh, Solar Ash Kingdom looks so cool. <laughs> Look at this thing. Ah, oh, Pathless as well. I love the run animation in Pathless. More than just that, I guess, but the run animation is real strong. Oh, this game's cute. I've never seen this before. Probably announced before. Yeah, I can't believe Rune 2 is, like, a thing, by the way. 
I'm so glad that Conan and Rune are both around. Oh my god. I'm on full auto chess. Man, they got auto chess and Fortnite and Please Rocket League. To the stage, Loring Lee, founder and CEO of Dragon Nest. Indeed, auto chess has turned out to be a sensation with hundreds of thousands, millions of players getting a taste of it. And here to talk about it's coming to PC is yeah. Loring Lee. Take it away, Loring. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Loring Lee. Would an auto chess kind of defeat the purpose? Yeah. I mean, Hello. yeah, if you take the Hello. title literally, I'm but it's, CEO it's not like an automatic China chess game. player, China if that's what you're wondering. Is, uh, it's like its own and, original uh, thing. Comes from China. It's interesting. I'm so happy to be here today on this stage to introduce our game, Auto Chess, to all of you. This is a really exciting moment for us. As the trailer says, this is a real engaging game of Auto Chess. Dragonstone now is working with the creator of, okay, of Auto Chess, Jodo Studio. Uh, we are working together to bring Auto Chess to your world, both on PC and uh, mobile, so that everyone from anywhere with any device can enjoy the same fun of Auto Chess. Now we are building the PC version with, uh, by using the uh, game engine of Unreal Engine 4. As everyone knows, Unreal Engine is one of the best game engines of the world. With the help, with the help of Apple Games and by the power of Unreal, I believe we can finish our job quickly and efficiently. And today, I'm very glad to announce the PC version of Auto Chess will be coming to the Epic Games Store. I look yeah, you're not going to get a big pop for that one, I'm afraid. I look forward to all of you playing auto chess on PC later this year. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Loring Lee. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thanks so much for yeah. sharing the news with us. Once again, auto chess, if you have not played it, you must check it out. It is so fun. Our next title with Frankie up above. I understand it is an inspired indie game. We'll find out, Sean, because one of the things we love about PC gaming is the way that game creators from all over the world can draw inspiration from one another's work. Chris Charles is a great example of that, a gorgeous indie love letter to classic JRPGs yeah, developed by game. a team in Colombia. Chris Taylor's spin on the genre brings a unique perspective that lets you see the past, present, and future on one screen at the same time. So you'll see the future change based on your decisions in real time. Here's the world-exclusive reveal of Chris Taylor's. Chris Tails? I sure hope the character isn't named Chris. If you saw what was, what is, and what would be. If you knew how it ends. Would you change it? Could you make the hard decisions? And would you be strong enough to fight? Wow, those two look so cool. If you learn from the past and act in the present, you can rewrite the future.
Not sold on the title, but the game looks fantastic. Hey, demo on Steam. We'll play the demo on Steam. In PC gaming, it's not the size of your weapon, it's how you use it. And I'm holding one of the, well, or quite frankly, Thus it's I'm holding average, isn't it? It's just your big average, weapon. you know, Glock, really. No, it's one of the ridiculous alien weapons from our next game, Valfaris. A brutal, heavy metal-infused 2G action platformer inspired by true old-school classics like Contra and Turrican. Assuming the role of fearless warrior players must blast and slash their way through the doomed citadel of Valfaris, overcoming its deadly environments and enemies before challenging the arcane evil at its very heart. Get ready to rip the galaxy and you wormhole from publisher Big Sugar. This is Valfaris. Hey, Big Sugar again. Good name. Whoa, that 3D looks great. Oh, I really love the 3D art in this. I thought it was just pixel art at the beginning, but... Yeah, this must be from the guys who made Slain. It sure looks like it. excited for our next guest in case you have not been in downtown LA E3 is covered with Borderlands 3 art it's amazing it's beautiful and joining me is the amazing and beautiful Paul Sage creative director of Borderlands 3 beautiful is the new one thanks yeah there you go Paul right. welcome I mean there's been so much hype around Borderlands 3. What's the stuff you're really excited to be sharing this year at E3? Oh man, so you know, we've talked about our vault hunters. Well, this time we get to talk about Moe's and she is our uh, gunner vault hunter. So yeah. she has a big mech, so it's one of the things. All about loot, we're talking about, you know, the different loot, such as shields, grenades, those yeah. things, going to different planets, so a lot of stuff to talk about. Well, I mean, I wanna start right off with Moe's. Tell us everything you can about her. Okay, yes, I'll tell you everything I can. So Moe's, again, like I said, she's a mech pilot. She has this big mech, it's called Iron Bear. She gets into Iron Bear. Yeah. You know, we have multiple action skills, which means that she can equip either a minigun or a rail gun or a flamethrower. You know, if you want to barbecue your enemies, something like that. Oh, so, nice. You know, uh, yeah, Moses is a, a terrifically fun character for us right now. Now, we've been excited to be collating a whole bunch of community questions. We're going to break them into two categories. First, there's a whole bunch of... It's hard for me to get pumped about the other Vault Hunters. Sure we get to right now. One of the big categories is... Because the sirens is too powerful. A billion guns but Moses earlier, is cool. but what can you tell us Probably about like some of the other gear that my the second preferred systems right in the game? Yeah, so uh, you, let's talk about grenades, like one of my favorite things that we don't get to talk about a lot. So in the past we've had grenades, if they've had yeah. like one thing, they can bounce, they can stick to different things, you know. Yeah. This time we're combining like all of those things. So for instance, the other day I was playing and I threw a grenade and that grenade had a bounce, it would stick, an explosion would come out and the grenade would fire guns as it was going through, right? So we have like a ton of different <laughs> grenades that, that are in there. It's okay, we can buffer a little. Shield where if you duck, there we go, perfect. Stand out in front of you, you know, so oh, just, just tons of different things that we have you know, with our characters. Class mods, class mods are unique, and that they give you skills this time as well as enhancing the skills you currently have. I, I also remember earlier you mentioned about artifacts. What are those? Okay, so I'm not going to front with you guys. Are, you know, we, I really need to go to the bathroom. On, like, I've been like hey, drinking a bunch of water, fluid? Can and I like I've been sitting down can for. I jump? Can I man like, right, right, right. So two hours and change now so i'm just gonna let you guys watch this borderland stuff kind of and fun. and i'll so be back why don't we do something like that quick so artifacts actually add certain things to movement so for instance you can slide faster you can slide and every time you slide there's an explosion we have something we call we call <laughs> a second category of questions unrelated to loot well there's going to be a single player campaign happening after the campaign what are some of the beyond the single player maybe end game you can talk about 
All right, in-game content. Okay, well, let's see three, so i give a little bit. So we have this Great. thing what we call the Guardian system. So for those people who played Borderlands before, you might remember Badass Ranks. Badass Ranks, you can get, you know, it's basically kind of an infinite progression system that added to your stats. Yeah. We doubled down on that. We have what we call Guardian Rank. And Guardian Rank not only has that infinite progression, but it has skills and different skins that you can open up as you go through. And the cool thing about that is, like, every character that you play on on that account yeah. gets the benefits of Guardian Rank. Oh, interesting. All right, last category we're going to go through, and then we're going to hit some rapid-fire questions. How do the boss fights in Borderlands 3 compare to Borderlands 1 and 2? I know those were big aspects. What, how do you build upon that? Right, so I think of a boss fight, you know, like I, I'm an old-school Nintendo fan, right? So I love huge boss fights that have, like, three oh, yeah. phases and stuff like that. So now those people, you know, smart people in the audience know that we've talked about going to vaults instead of vault, right? And so there are right, different, right. like, huge boss encounters there uh, that are just, you know, multi-phase boss encounters. We have, like, a lot of different mini-bosses throughout the game, so a lot of different boss encounters throughout the game. We still doing well, Borderlands? Yes, we are. Really quick questions that should be yes or no, very brief. I First grabbed a snack, too, real quick. How will you be handling multiplayer? On the way to the bathroom. Um, multiplayer, we will basically be allowing anybody to jump in at any time. Good. So, Awesome. From MHL Animations, can I pet the gun? Oh. Great question. Oh, man. I'm not I appreciate that there's like not enough footage, stuff, you know, you, so we're looping that's this. That's a personal question. All right, great. <laughs> Sam Wiseman asks, is Maya's new companion a siren? People are asking the right questions. That's what I will say about that. Oh, you tease. Yeah, sorry. All right, from Ironic Sanguine says, is Tiny Tina going to be seen hands, fighting alongside the Vault Hunters? Yes. Nice. All right, I'm just going <laughs> to blast through a couple more as fast as I possibly can. Right. Uh, what's the level cap at launch? 50. Will we get to see Flack? Yes. Will we see golden keys and or shift codes for Borderlands 3? Absolutely. Good. Will there be I like shift codes. Yes. Other kinds of PvP? Mm, yes and no. <laughs> and also maybe. And Perfect. Maybe, yeah. And will you be able to transfer weapons between your characters? Absolutely. Right from the start. Perfect. And when is the damn game coming out? Friday the 13th, 2019, September 13th. Perfect. Borderlands.com for more information. Thanks so much for joining me on stage. Sean, thank you. This is some people in the chat not again, knowing what shift codes are. Shift codes are um, uh, 15 Our next game, letter be number alphanumeric codes that um, Gearbox distributes fucking constantly just on Twitter all over the place. Um, you just type oh. them into the appropriate oh, hi, Borderlands wait, game. Sorry, hello. I was just. Uh, you get yeah, a free I was actually testing out my outfit for, for this loot. weekend. I but don't they've know never what sold of. them. I, they've I never really distributed sure, them. As very like, sure. Like in a, in a way so that you could pay for. President of Tripwire. Thank like, you for joining us again. They just on give the away yeah, very random man. special yes. good loot. Now last year we revealed man eater. Oh, it's true though. Sometimes they're not. You're right. You're right. Sometimes they're not keys. Sometimes they're for costumes and stuff. You're totally correct. Man eater is an open world action RPG or Shark but they're always fixed, it. like it's not you random. Start as a, a small baby shark the loot you get after is you random, have to but it's not like one person's going to get a golden key and, and one person's going to get a way to the costume, top of the you know? ecosystem. The three words that we think some but of the game the loot is also always level appropriate with the golden and, uh, keys, we also so have someone we'd like you, to you meet. always get stuff well, that's let's meet and then let's take a look in a usable range too, which is nice. Yeah, there's lots of shift keys that still work for uh, two and pre-sequel. They still give them out for both of those games, so. A good song selection. with that camera, we two gonna toss it. I hope this comes out on consoles after, because I'm, I'm interested. John. 
What did you think of Shinji Mikami's new game? Uh, I think the, the um, pre-rendered trailer was quite beautiful. <laughs> that was Scaly Pete. So, and Scaly I'm Pete's optimistic. the villain in this tale. Sk Pete is uh, I like the looks is a of it. best fisherman That's in the Gulf, sure. best shark fisherman, or he'll tell you he's the best shark fisherman. And uh, he disfigures our baby shark at the beginning of the game and does some really nasty things. So do you hunt he's the sharks or nice are you guy. the shark? You are in the story of the Man shark. Is You're told, that that main uh, shark. Through the lens of a reality show called Shark Hunters vs. Man Eaters, and it follows Pete and uh, the player shark on its adventures and uh you know it's it's a really you know it's, it's it's a very exciting way uh way to tell a story and based on that trailer to be honest john it looks like your main goal of the shark is to just bite everything yeah there is there is an awful lot of man eating going on in this game that is the name of the game and uh but we'd like to think of the game as a shark tastic fun Look action at this. game it's like <laughs> damage GTA numbers shark um, but there's, Look at this finisher! <laughs> oh my god! If there, there is more to the game than just eating, so uh, we spent a lot of time making, moving through the water, breaching out, and, uh, and adding abilities to go up on the beach for an afternoon snack. Um, so uh, there's, there's a, a lot of exciting things that you can do in the game. And you mentioned before it's a shark PG. How does that progression system work? So there's three facets to, to the shark PG elements of the game. Uh, there's growth, there's life phases, and there's evolutions. Mm -hmm. So growth uh, comes about through eating things, nutrients, people, whatever you can find. Oh, so it's like Evo. And that's kind of like your XP in the, the game. SNES. That allows you to level up, your shark will grow a little bit, you'll get more powerful. And then at key phases, uh, that we call life phases, you'll, you'll, you'll make a big jump. So Let's, let's say you're a one off. A I mean, if it comes to consoles, then I can play And you're about it. to become an adult. When you become an adult, you take a big leap in size, a big leap in growth, uh, uh, power and capability and then as you reach these life phases you unlock evolutions that can be applied to parts of the shark's body for example you could get metallic teeth that allow you to shred boats or a powerful tail that allows you to jump to incredible heights or you could get mutated lungs that allow you to spend a little more time on the beach getting those afternoon snacks oh, thank you Just for really making quickly, this John, everyone's wanting to know this thank question you, John. when's it coming out Oh, uh, so we're really hard hammerheading away at this game uh, and trying to make we're it really the most hard. awesome shark RPG ever. Um, we're not ready to announce a date, but we're pretty certain you're going to see it before the next PC gaming show. Well, I hope we do, John. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start biting people. In fact, I'm quite hungry at the moment, so I think actually I'm going to find an audience member because you guys look tasty. So I'll see you in a bit. I'm just going to have a snack. Thank you, John. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, chairs. Send me a chair. My chair's not great. Doesn't have a head pillow. The lumbar supports middling. The only good thing about my chair is I could wrap it in green so it chromas out better. I don't even have the armrests on this chair because it was like it's like an old office chair. And the armrests were too high and they couldn't go down, so I wasn't able to get them like under my desk. It's such a pain in the ass. You know, one of the absolute best parts about being sponsored by iWin for the PC Gaming Show is that I get to sit for this next segment and talk to you about Terraria. Terraria is one of the best-selling PC games of all time, selling almost 30 million copies. And part of the reason why it's maintained such popularity is the fact that the developers, Relogic, continue to add content, going from 250 items that released to over keeps getting updated. 4, really, uh, Let's take a look at their really into that game, aren't they? expansion coming up. Terraria, I guess the same could be said of Minecraft, though, huh? And they've got Starbound going, too, alongside it. Oh, Starbound is another studio? Shit, my mistake. I thought it was the same guys. So I remember the aesthetic being similar, but maybe I'm crazy. for a little bit it's fine it's okay oh no the video just ended there okay yeah right the next title that we're going to be looking at 
is a game that is the spiritual successor to her story. It's called Telling Lies by Annapurna Interactive, and joining me to talk about it is game director Sam Barlow and actor-producer Logan Marshall Green. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. My main man. Now, My if, main man. if you haven't played her story, you totally should. It's fantastic. I want to note, it is a game where you watch live interactive video in order to uncover what happened with a murder. What, what is it that's going on in Telling Lies? What's the premise? So, uh, like her story, Telling Lies is a game in which you watch video footage to piece together a story. And this time, we have a woman who has stolen an NSA hard drive, which contains mm. secretly recorded intimate and private conversations between our four characters. Something has gone terribly wrong, and it's up to you to figure out what and why. It's time to take a look at some of the gameplay mechanics and see telling lies in action. Let's take a look. story was so dope, so like very down for this. It's late. I gotta you know, way to actually like use FMVs in games in like a super constructive and inventive way, right? Love you. I've only ever been in love once. Oh jeez. Uh, it was with a girl I met when I was 18, but I was too young and naive to handle it properly. I guess I still carry a torch for her, which makes me a glad that that searching name thing is still romantic a thing. or underdeveloped emotional. I'm a loyal friend. A man died in my house at work today. Geez, there was a lot of different sets there too. Oh, Sam, I got some questions for you. The first story was a very limited seen. amount of sets. I mean, talk to me about right. the mechanics. I mean, I saw, you know, the subtitles up, highlighting, and it was loading more video footage. What's going on? So what we do in Telling Lies is we take all of the exploration you would have in a normal video game, so all that walking around in a 3D world, yeah. and we apply that directly to the story, to the footage itself. So you're going to be scrubbing around in these clips, paying close attention, and you're going to be picking up on the subtext, listening to names, people, places. And with that information, you're going to use that to find more clips, dig into those, see. and over time, kind of build up this picture of the story. And it's, it's truly like an open world video game. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of times with the open world video games, they talk about you know, the square kilometer edge or miles in America. Um, what's the sort of scope that we're talking about? Like, how many hours of footage is there? So we got like over 10 hours of footage here. So wow. it's a story that encompasses like two Holy years. shit. What I wanted to do with this one was, like I said, really embrace this idea of it being an open world game. You're free to explore and follow your curiosity. Just lose yourself in this story, yeah. all the characters. It's this huge, messy, colorful story that we're trying to tell. Well, I'm curious, Logan, as a, as a performer in this kind of game, what is it like to actually try to have all the layers in there for each performance, also not knowing when a player is going to be seeing the specific footage you're performing? Well, it's definitely a non-linear uh, open world game, but our approach and Sam's approach was um, not unlike a movie or a TV show, and we had to understand it A to B. And so for the most part, that's how we shot it, obviously, when you're shooting a movie or a TV show. Yeah. Um, and in this case, a game, you're going to be shooting out of, out of order. But we actually stayed pretty linear in how we approached the story. We, we went after it like uh, all the other times we were actors. We just went after intention yeah, yeah. and then what do we want? And, and, um, and we tried to make it as deep. Um, you know, it's got a lot of scope. Yeah. Um, right. But we wanted to, to make it as deep as possible, and Sam is one of the best uh, movie or TV directors I've worked with, so it was uh, very similar. This guy. Nice. Yeah, look, look at you two. Yeah. Now, of course, I do want to stress to any of you, if you have not played Her Story, it's quick to play through, it's absolutely brilliant. Please check it out in the meantime, but we're, of course, waiting to find out when can we play Telling Lies. Very soon.
very soon, I promise. We'll have a date soon. Right now, you can go to Steam. You can wishlist on Steam. We all love Steam. Um, and yeah, very soon. We'll be showing a little bit more during E3, and uh, the game will be out yeah, very soon. Fantastic. Desperate to get it out. Very soon. <laughs> as soon as humanly possible. Yeah. Well, Sam Logan, thanks so much for joining me on stage. Once again, telling lies. Now, up on the balcony, Frankie's going to be talking I, I to think, us about a game that might By the way, guys, I think he said we all year. have Steam. I see a lot of people in the chat saying we all love Steam. It. Frankie, I think what's he going said on with Warframe? We all well, have Steam. One of my favorite parts of last year's way. show, aside from being upstaged by a giant duck, was getting a glimpse at the future of Warframe. And here with the latest look at the next expansion to the universe is Space Mom Rebecca Ford. So, chat, behave yourselves, please, because Mother's here. Now, Rebecca. What are we about to see? Uh, we're going to take a look at an amazing trailer that our team has put together. Uh, a lot of our players have been waiting a year for a look at what we've been calling Railjack, so it's about time to, you know, see what we've been doing. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, man, I never got to any of the flying stuff. I kind of dropped it, honestly. It was a cool game, though. July 6th, my birthday. Nice. I will not watch it. Just letting you know, Digital Extremes, if you want me to watch it, not on my birthday. That's not going to happen. Yeah, that's going to get people to watch. <laughs> A free Prime costume, like, yeah. Rebecca, it must be so exciting to know that the fans have finally seen it, and you're clearly going all in on the epic space combat. So tell me about the new stuff that players yeah. are going to be able to experience. Yeah, I wasn't shaking before we started talking, and now I am because it's real. Because you know, Imperium. Or sorry, not costume, Pokemon but you know what I mean. Like, it's uh, basically uh, taking uh, the space uh, ninja Warframe, part of Warframe, whatever, yeah. sending it back up to space, bringing players that sorry, yeah, you're right. They're, they're they know, more than cosmetic, taking the enemies absolutely. like the Corpus and the Grenier, giving them their own railjack to you know, essentially explore the solar system with and take down the bad guys. And when are fans going to get to see more? Well, uh, TennoCon is in London, Ontario. It's July 6th, and you can come uh, watch it online on Twitch. We're going to be showing a lot more in our keynote for uh, what Empyrean is going to be. Well, today I'm getting a feel for the suit. So uh, what's the deal with that sweet-looking Necros Prime? How do I get my Tenno arms into it? I cannot say that on live television, but, uh, you know, there, there are ways. But, yeah, you just have to watch, link your Warframe account to your Twitch account. If you watch 30 minutes of our Tenno live show, you can get it. But hopefully you stay for the whole hour because we got lots to show. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca. And good luck with TennoCon on July 6th. Thank you. Okay, now we've seen some amazing stuff today, but nothing quite so gloriously strange as our next game. Developed by Brooklyn-based studio Feral Cat Den, it's an existential space jazz odyssey set during the Big Bang. Yeah, it's actually blown my mind learning about this one. Buckle up, everyone, because we're about to get bonkers with Genesis Noir. The lady here for Warframe is like, why am I still in this shot? Great pull in a tighter shot. This game looks really cool. I think I saw a write-up on, was it on Kotaku or something? God, I could not even imagine the process of putting together something so abstract and still good looking. Like, you've really got to have an eye for that. Genesis Noir, just beautiful, stylish art. 
The next game we're going to take a look at is the twist on the stealth genre. It's called El Ijo, where you play as a six-year-old trying to escape a monastery and find your mother, mother using toys and tricks to avoid monks. Let's take a look at this gorgeous spaghetti western inspired project from Studio Handy Games. It's awful, but whenever I hear someone say, like, Kiho, Kiho, the word, I just think of the Hermano arc in Arrested Development. Oh, this is cute. I kind of thought it was going to be a little more dark and oppressive, but it's cute, actually. Like, I mean, it's still not great. He's got to escape and find his mom, but, like, he's cute. Yeah, forgive my Spanish, I don't speak it. Once again is the title of the trailer we just saw. For our final guest tonight, please join me in welcoming from Larian Studios, CEO. Sam yeah, of course Lincoln. Larian's gonna and close it out with from, Baldur's Gate. Uh, of course, Dungeons of course. Dragons, Wizards of the Coast, the creative director of Dungeons and Dragons, Mike Merles, to talk about Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now this was only just recently announced. How did this partnership come about? Would have been amazing uh, if they could have announced it at this Wizards show. Wizards of the Coast at the end of uh, Divinity Original Sin 1. Yeah. That was back in 2014. And oh, wow. I tried to convince them back then wow, that they should give us the Baldur's Gate 3 license. And they said, yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so but we had a long chat about yeah. um, what the vision would be for the game. And then uh, we kept on bumping into each other. And then uh, suddenly in uh, 2016, I get a phone call from Nathan Stewart, who's the big boss of Mike and the head of Dungeons and Dragons. He said, yeah. you need to come to Seattle right away. And uh, we're going to have dinner in a very shady restaurant. And he had this big stack of paper <laughs> with him. And on it was Baldur's Gate 3. And in it was pretty much everything that we talked about. And he says, I'm going to wow. present this to my board. Do you still want to do it? Said, yeah, of course I still yeah. want to do it. Uh, and then a couple of weeks later, we were started negotiating. And here we are. I mean, what does the Baldur's Gate franchise mean to you, Mike? Oh, to me, it's the crown jewel of D&D uh, computer games, right? I mean. For me personally, That's a reasonable thing to say, the original honestly. one was that finally I had the chance to actually play a D&D campaign rather yeah. than having to run them for all my friends. God, this so guy's so pumped. So it just means so much to us. Baldur's Gate, it's you know, such fantastic storytelling, and it's so exciting to see it come to a, not only a new generation of gamers, yeah. but for the gamers who remember the 20 years it's been since the right. original, the first two in the series. So it's incredibly exciting. And for us, it really is, it's such an important part of the yeah. d mythos as a whole. And we, we got a chance to see the trailer. Talk to me about some of the story elements, the world elements. What are things we're gonna see in Baldur's Gate 3? Well, we're only talking about what's in the trailer right now, but uh, obviously you're gonna go to the city, because we start with the city. Uh, you start outside of the city, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be mind flayers, and uh, they're very nasty. Uh, you are seeing in the trailer the process of seromorphosis, as we, we yeah. call it. Uh, it's accelerated, so that's not normal. Yeah. And you're going to see a lot of iconic creatures, iconic characters, iconic places, and that's as far as we go. I'm curious about some of the gameplay elements, because obviously, you know, there's just been a big resurgence of Dungeons and Dragons, tons of broadcasts on Twitch. Um, I mean, how do you translate some of the insane things that players want to do into, you know, what has to be a structured computer game? 
So we started with the player handbook, which is basically the basic rule set of Dungeons uh, and Dragons. Which player handbook? Which uh, edition? Fifth edition. Fifth edition. Right. Yeah. And so we ported uh, as much as we could to the video game. We looked at what worked really well. We looked at the things that didn't work that well because it is a video game and this yeah. was made for uh, uh, tabletop gaming. And uh, so we started modifying those things and then we had to add things on top of it because yeah. uh, if you play tabletop, you have a game master and you say, well, I want to do this. Yeah. And then the game master. I want to master... start a fight with a pigeon. And he's like, okay, roll yeah, for sure. dexterity. Exactly. That's yeah. it. So we had to add systems to make that possible within the game. But we've been, we've gone very, very far. Yeah. I mean, can you give an example of like a crazy moment that a player might do that you could actually play out in the game? Uh, well, I could, let's say that we get into a fight because you ask a nasty question, I don't want to answer it. And uh, <laughs> I take the chair over there, I put it on fire, smash it on your head. Uh, well, I, just as an example. It's just an example, this <laughs> is fine, we're just talking, we're just talking. Uh, these are things that we have to put systems into the game for to, to do it, which are not necessarily going to be described inside of the book. Interesting. And, I mean, like, a good example. In terms of your role, mm -hmm. speaking to Larian Studios, you have tons of data of all the, of course, the things that players do. What's the sort of information that you provide an assistance? Well, really what it comes down to is providing the story support. You know, we think of Dungeons and Dragons, the universe of D&D, &D, uh, it's like a, a toy box for dungeon right. masters and players to go into and build their own stories. So working with Larry and working with Ben, a lot of it was just opening up that toy box and sharing it and giving that kind of guidance. You know, like I remember w one of our first meetings, we just laid out a map of Baldur's Gate and the Sword Coast. Shout out to Dragon Age 2, by the way. Like, what kind of story do you Fighting want to Fighting to, to beat go? out Pillars, the pillars of Eternity 2. Oh, look, tied with Pillars 2. And for the, in terms of the system support, you know, what, what does it mean in terms of the story for each character? For each nice. character race, each character class. Pillars so that, 2 absolutely you know, if, if blown the fuck out. you have your class and it's in the game, you really feel like Shame. you're Pillars taking on dope. that role that you love so much from the table. Yeah. Uh, it's really coming Chess to life Neckbeard says, is Pillars 2 really that bad? It is so and not. We're going to talk in a it's moment a great about game. Baldur's Gate 3 release dates and whatnot. Just I don't think anyone would vote for best of the past 10 years or whatever, to, whatever it was. I understand that there is a tabletop prequel coming for Baldur's Gate. Exactly. So in Baldur's Gate, we think there's one saga all the different games coming together to yeah. tell one grand story of this city. Right. So uh, on September 17th, we're releasing our next tabletop campaign, uh, Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus, and it is the next chapter in the Baldur's Gate saga, right. and it's a prequel to Baldur's Gate 3. So if you haven't played a Baldur's Gate game since Baldur's Gate 1 or 2, this is your chance to check out on the history. It's been about 100 years. Man, since there's, you know that uh, so this will give you a Wizards chance of the Coast the game, um, on, Betrayal at House on the Hill? The there's Shakers a Baldur's are. Gate version of that, I'm pretty sure, and I really want to get campaign it. that takes you from the mean streets wow. of Baldur's Gate to the depths of I love of Betrayal itself. so much. And, sort of and when I found the out there was a Baldur's Gate one, I was like, oh shit. You want to redeem Baldur's Gate? Pretty sure it's Baldur's Gate. I'm sure it was another one of their fantasy settings. Well, I have to ask, it's a question on a lot of people's minds. What can you talk to us about expected yeah, release Baldur's Gate, time yeah, yeah. frames. So people have been waiting for it for a long time. Yeah. They're going to have to wait a little bit. The trail's more, amazing. Uh, yeah. When it's ready. Totally. And so uh, we don't. They should we, make a betrayal video game. game. Play, I so would play that. Sure, it's really, yeah. really good. Even if it was just a raw when, adaptation, when case, it'd be nice to not have to. Well, I know a lot of people have been waiting a long time. And worry I I about some of the rules that I'm not 100% sure I know correctly. Sim games are any indication of the quality. It's going to be fantastic and worth the wait. There's Definitely. always Thanks that so one rule in like the big elaborate board game where you're always like, Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> this is how Goodbye. it works. Goodbye, guys. Why Let's are just they play leaving? it like this well, and hope it works. The PC gaming show has officially concluded. Let's bring up on the stage the fantastic Frankie Ward. Come here, Frankie. Hello. Well, well, well. Thank you so much, Sean. Hasn't this audience been absolutely fantastic today? Both these hosts are great, guys, by the way. Thank As you usual. so much for coming out to the 5th Annual Frankie's PC Gaming Show. We want to give an enormous thanks to all of you who tuned in live. We want to, of course, thank all of you who personally showed up this morning. And, of course, the sponsors who helped make this possible. Epic Game Store, iWin, Frontier, Funcom, Paradox, Interactive, Hovercast, Perfect World Rebellion. So what is next? Oh, yeah. So some of you guys are going to head out now because it's pretty much over. Um, next up for us will be Ubisoft at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Thank you so which is much. in, and I gotta oh, ask, boy, that's in an hour and 12 about. minutes. Not that well, far from now. I do love a baby uh, I'm going to be off so definitely in the interim, plan is doing slightly um, but Matt's going to be coming over for that. And then things. later tonight, uh, we'll be um, Square Enix at 9 p.m.
songs of yeah, we're not going to do limited run games. Limited run games for anyone interested is going to be on uh, from 3 p.m. to 4, which is in 12 minutes. Uh, limited run is, of course, a, uh, a publisher who mainly does physical releases for games. Uh, last year, they were able to announce uh, the house in Feta Morgana, which was cool. Uh, but otherwise, like they pretty much just do, you know, what's coming out physically, right? And I don't, I don't want to, I don't really want to. I'm not going to get that pumped for like, Think you know, you get a last 20 indie games clutch. I like and I've Watch already this. played Think and like expensive physical copies that I'm not going to buy. You know what I mean? I like the Limited Run a lot. I think they're really cool. Win. Shout outs to you, Doug, Watch if you happen this. to be watching this. You're a dope Think guy. Leveling up only but happens like, in game. You know, Watch this. It's just, it's On Intel Core i7, the they'll rise to every challenge. I'm not gonna, now it's your I'm turn. Not a while, Game, you know. record, stream without <laughs> compromise on Intel um, Core i7. Anyway, we will be back on in about an hour and change uh, for, for Ubisoft, which will be fun. I know this is an unpopular opinion, but I hope they have a nice Just Dance intro like they usually do. Uh, I'm, I'm keen for their show. Um, thoughts on PC gaming show? Um, the content was good. Lots of really good content. The pacing was slow. Uh, and again, it's conflicting because I like hearing from the developers. I like letting them talk to me and hearing what they have to say about their games. Some of them are more interesting than others, unfortunately. But boy, two hours is long. And <laughs> back to back with uh, the VR one was a little was a little rough too. So <laughs> I've been sitting for three hours. I reckon I'm going to stretch my legs a little bit. Um, I guess on the topic of the Upload VR one, uh, Upload VR was was quite good. I like I like that one a lot. It, it has it had its own issues as well, though the pacing was really jacked. It was their first year, um, but they did have good content. So at very least. Um, anyway, I'll be back on in an hour and a bit. Uh, I will see you guys later. In the interim, feel free to check out the Limited Run Games event, which we'll be playing in like twelve minutes or some shit. And uh, that'll surely be a good time, and we'll be back at 9 p.m. for Square Enix. For me, this year, Nintendo and Square Enix are the two that I'm I'm ball eyeballing. I really think those are going to be the the two special ones. But who knows? I could be wrong. I really could be. I don't know who this guy is. Zeke. <laughs> That's who this guy is. Hello, Zeke. <laughs> anyway, have a good one. I'll see you guys in a bit. Take care. Oh, yeah, Big Ice, right. Hang on. There's a lot of water. Big Ice is starting to go. I forgot. Big Ice is still large. Look at that. It's still big. It's still quite big. Do we need, a, we need a comparison? Here. Here's our comparison. This is how big Big Ice is. It's doing great. Oh, cold. cold. Like, really... Ooh. Really quite chilly. That hasn't stopped. Take care. See you guys in a bit.